All right, good afternoon. Um, I have not one but two senior personnel announcements for you. Uh, today, the Secretary General is appointing Elizabeth Spehar of Canada as Assistant Secretary General for Peacebuilding Support in the Department of Political and Peacebuilding Affairs, otherwise known uh, as DPPA. Uh, Ms. Spehar succeeds uh, Oscar Fernandez Taranco of Argentina, to whom the Secretary General is deeply grateful for his dedication and contribution. With 35 years of experience in international and political affairs, Ms. Spehar has worked at headquarters and in the field, leading political, development, peacebuilding, and conflict prevention initiatives. Most recently, since 2016, she was, as you well know, the uh, head of the UN uh, mission in Cyprus at UNFASIP. The Secretary General is also appointing Bruno Le Marquis of France as his new deputy representative at uh, the UN peacekeeping mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Mr. Le Marquis succeeds uh, David McLaughlin Carr of Australia, to whom the Secretary General is grateful for his dedicated service and steadfast commitment to the United Nations. Having served since 2020 as deputy special representative of the UN's integrated office in Haiti and resident and humanitarian coordinator in Haiti. Mr. Le Marquis brings to this position extensive managerial leadership experience in complex multi-dimensional settings, development and humanitarian affairs and peace building. And we congratulate both of our uh, friends and colleagues for these uh, new jobs. Uh, I was asked a bit earlier about the situation in Yemen, and I can tell you that the Secretary General expresses his concern and deplores the recent Saudi-led coalition airstrikes in Sana'a that resulted in numerous civilian casualties. He reminds all of the parties of their obligation under international humanitarian law to protect civilians, to adhere to the principles of proportionality, distinction, and precaution. The Secretary General again calls upon all the parties to exercise maximum restraint and prevent further escalation and intensification of the conflict in Yemen. He reiterates his calls to the parties to engage constructively and without precondition with his special envoy, Hans Grunberg, in his effort, mediation efforts to advance the political process to reach a comprehensive negotiated settlement and to end the conflict in Yemen. Moving to Tonga, our humanitarian colleagues report that according to the government, three fatalities have been confirmed with several people injured. Needs assessments by the Tongan authorities are ongoing and should provide a better estimate of what is required of the international community. We are on standby with teams and emergency supplies and stocks in Tonga are being readied for distribution once humanitarian needs are identified. Our staff there are working to assist coordination response efforts in country. And as a reminder, at 1.30 p.m. Uh, this afternoon, uh, the acting resident and humanitarian coordinator for Fiji, the Solomon Islands, Tonga, Tuvalu, Vanu and Vanuatu, Jonathan Veitch, will brief you remotely um, and give you more detail on the situation on the ground. Uh, he, is, he will speak to you from Suva uh, in Fiji, where he is based, uh, and where it will be about 7.30 in the morning uh, when he speaks to you. Uh, and as a um, program note, at 1 p.m., um, Anniken Hutfeld, the Foreign Minister of Norway, will be joined by Kavya Asoka, the head of the NGO Working Group for Women, Peace, and Security. They will brief you um, at 1 p.m., the Security Council stakeout uh, following uh, the ongoing meeting. Uh, and just to keep on that Security Council note, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michel Bachelet, spoke uh, to the Council today on the open meeting, on the open debate on women, peace, and security. She said the situation that now that now faces women, human rights defenders, and per, and prospects for women's full participation in shaping peace, uh, shaping and building peace, are vastly worse than they were before the pandemic got underway. She added that, the, that at the heart of Resolution 1325 and subsequent resolutions by the Security Council is the need for strategies that create inclusive and safe participation channels for women from all backgrounds, movements, and communities. She, she also called on the international community to stand united and push back against attempts to attack, silence, and criminalize women's rights to, def to defend rights, participate in, to defend, excuse me, criminalize women's rights to defend rights, participate in decision-making, and express dissenting opinions. 
Quick humanitarian note from Afghanistan, where our UN colleagues on the ground are leading an interagency assessment team uh, to Qadis district in the northwest of the country following the 5.3 magnitude earthquake that struck the area yesterday afternoon local time. Um, they tell us that initial reports indicate that 26 people have been killed, four people injured, hundreds of houses damaged or destroyed, heavy rains before the earthquake reportedly made mud brick houses much more vulnerable to damage. People whose homes have been damaged or destroyed are sheltering with relatives and other members of their communities. Preliminary reports indicate that food, shelter, non-food items, and heating materials are most urgently needed. In addition, um, a uh, humanitarian-led assessment team, aid agencies are providing initial emergency support, including hot meals, mobile health teams, and the distribution of water purification tablets, hygiene kits, and water kits. And the special envoy for Syria, Ger Pedersen, was recently in Tehran, where he met with Iranian Foreign Minister Amir Abdullah Hyan and other Iranian officials. He was also in Doha, where he met with the Qatari Foreign Minister, Mohammed bin, bin Abdulrahman Al Thani. In Doha, he also met with the Syrian National Negotiations Committee President, Anas Al Abde. The special envoy explored with all of his interlocutors the possibilities for progress on the Constitutional Committee and on wide, a wider set of issues uh, step for step, stressing the need for key stakeholders to work together on issues of common concern to end the conflict in Syria in line with Security Council Resolution 2254. Mr. Pedersen has now returned to Geneva in Switzerland, where he will be continuing engagements there before heading to Brussels next Monday to discuss these issues with EU foreign ministers. He will then travel to New York to brief the Security Council on the 26th of January, and we will do our utmost to bring him to the microphone to face you. Uh, a few notes. Uh, you will have seen then a statement we issued yesterday. The Secretary General expressed his sadness following the death of former President of Mali, Ibrahim Bubakar uh, Keita, he conveyed his deepest condolences to the family of the former president and to all of the people of Mali. <coughs> um, uh, from UNRWA, um, the UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East has announced it is seeking $1.6 billion from the international community in 2022. The funding will fulfill the General Assembly's mandate to provide millions of Palestine refugees with vital life-saving services and programs, including education, health, and food assistance. The request includes additional emergency funding for UNRWA to address the humanitarian needs arising from crises in Gaza, the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, Syria, and Lebanon. Um, our team in the Democratic Republic of the Congo is supporting authorities to prepare sufficient storage facilities and refrigerators for new batches of vaccines landing in the country. The UN uh, Children's Fund has so far provided nearly 150 fri fridges, three cold rooms. Our team is also producing 100 solar fridges. Uh, pro excuse me, our team is also procuring 100 solar fridges, 100 freezers, three cold chain devices, two generators, 500 coolers, <coughs> and 1,000 vaccines carriers to keep vaccines cold and safe during transportation. The World Health Organization continues to provide authorities with technical support to procure vaccines and to ensure that vaccination sites follow health protocols. Over 6.2 million doses of uh, vaccines are currently available in the DRC. Over 1.8 million have been dispatched to 15 provinces, and nearly 240,000 people have now been fully vaccinated. Um, and from Venezuela, uh, Venezuela just received a fifth shipment of over 3.1 million COVID vaccines through COVAX mechanism. Our colleagues at the Pan American Health Organization were responsible for this procurement and logistics to deliver the vaccines, which now total over 12 million in Venezuela through COVAX alone, with more on the way for several uh, countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. Nearly 93 million doses have been delivered to 33 countries in the region. Um, quick note from Bosnia-Herzegovina, where uh, our resident coordinator, Ingrid McDonald, said um, in a statement that while Martin Luther King Jr. Day was yesterday, every day is, crucial, uh, is a crucial day to condemn hate speech in all its forms. 
um, she continues to raise the alarm to combat hate speech regarding recent uh, incidents involving the glorification of war criminals and damage to the inscriptions paying tribute to the victims of Srebrenica genocide. The resident coordinator stressed uh, that such events have no place in a democratic society as they perpetuate the suffering of the survivors and the families of the victims who deserve respect and solidarity. She also called upon the authorities to ensure that measures are taken to prevent and act upon manifestations of hatred and discrimination as all people in Bosnia and Herzegovina deserve to live in an environment of mutual understanding, respect, and dignity. And two more notes and I will get to your questions. In Ecuador, some good news concerning the environment. Uh, our friend, the resident coordinator, Lena Savelli, joined authorities in the Galapagos Islands on behalf of the Secretary General for the signing of an executive decree that extends the current marine protected area there with an additional 60,000 square kilometers. That's over 23,000 square miles. This follows up on Ecuador's commitment at COP26 in Glasgow last November. The creation of the extensive protected area is a joint effort between Ecuador, Colombia, Costa Rica, and Panama that will contribute to protecting biodiversity, tackling climate change, and securing food and livelihoods in the Galapagos. The executive director of UNEP, the UN Environment Program, Inger Anderson, hailed the announcement via Twitter as it protects a highway for sea turtles, sharks, and other migrating marine life. Uh, 3 p.m. this afternoon, the Office of the Special Representative for Children in Armed Conflict, uh, Virginia Gamba, will hold uh, an event to mark the 25th anniversary of the office. In a video message, the Secretary General reminds us that 25 years ago, the global community issued a bold call to action to better protect children impacted by conflict. Step by step, he adds, we are providing that grave violations against children can't, we are proving that grave violations against children can be stopped, but boys and girls are still in harm's <laughs> way. A study on the evolution of the mandate of the Children on Conflict Office will also be launched during the event, and it's available online. Uh, James. Yep. Um, there has now been announced in the last hour a meeting on Friday between Secretary of State Blinken and Foreign Minister Lavrov. What is the Secretary General's reaction to the fact that that, that uh, yet another high-level um, uh, diplomatic event is happening with regard to Ukraine? Well, <clears throat> we are always very supportive of these type of dialogue, especially at a time of heightened tensions uh, in the region, um, and we hope that the outcome of the, of the meeting will be a lessening of those tensions. You talk about heightened tensions. Mm -hmm. It's estimated there's over 100,000 troops now on mm -hmm. the border mm -hmm. um, on, uh, uh, surrounding mm -hmm. Ukraine. Does the Secretary General believe there could be any good reason for those troops to be there? Look, uh, the Secretary General believes that all of the member states uh, involved should do whatever they can uh, to lower tensions. So I'll ask it another way. Does the Secretary General believe that that troop buildup around Ukraine is threatening and provocative? I will leave it at the answer of my first, your second question. Yes, Edie. Oh, sort of a follow-up on that first, because there have now been reports that uh, Russian troops are moving from the Far East to uh, do war games in Belarus uh, near Ukraine's border. Uh, does the Secretary General believe that that adds to the heightening of tension? Look, uh, we just, uh, we are, we stand for more dialogue between all of the parties uh, involved and then I would refer you to uh, what the Secretary General said at the stakeout last week. Um, I know you sent us uh, an a, a note about the number of UN staff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in Tonga. Um, just wondering, I, I know we're getting a briefing mm -hmm. from Fiji, mm -hmm. but um, what's the status of communications between um, the UN staff in Tonga and elsewhere, and what's the UN doing trying to uh, get additional people and aid into the country? Uh, 
they're all, the tw all 23, which is 22 national uh, Tongan nationals and one international staff, are all safe and sound. The communications have been very uh, difficult, uh, mostly using satellite phone. Um, we are awaiting the results of a government assessment to see exactly what they need. And my understanding is that our staff that are on the ground are participating in, in kind of assessing what the situation is. And I, at our, my colleague uh, will have, at 1.30, will have more, more granular details. And I think he's been able to speak directly to some of our colleagues there. Yeah. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, I have a question and a follow-up uh, for Africa. Uh, Sudan, uh, yesterday there were uh, several people died, about seven, and today the demonstrations are still uh, continuing. How does the Secretary General and his special representative uh, for the Sudan feel that this time uh, that the uh, perhaps needed to be escalated to the member states, to the kicking back to the Security Council, since the pattern of killing civilians of uh, uh, un, uh, arbitrary uh, arrests and, and even more is on a uh, continuing uh, path? Well, I mean, there, you know, I think there is already a very high level of diplomatic involvement, not only uh, through uh, Volker Pertz, uh, the head of our, our mission, uh, but uh, we are working very closely as well with the League of Arab States, uh, with the African Union. There are a number of, of countries that have particular interest in Sudan who are also involved. I think, you know, a number of things can happen at once. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we want to see an end to the violence. Uh, we condemned very clearly the use of live ammunition and lethal force against demonstrators yesterday. We continue to call on the authorities um, to allow people to express themselves peacefully, and demonstrators have to act in a peaceful way. Uh, manner, but security forces should be there to protect people's rights to de to de demonstrate peacefully. We also want a, a uh, I would say, positive atmosphere and a conducive atmosphere for all of the consultations that Mr. Pertz uh, is having. And obviously, there are diplomatic uh, there are diplomatic engagements at various levels going on. Uh, a follow up, uh, still in Africa, on uh, yesterday your remarks about uh, Mr. De Mistura, Stefan De Mistura, the special representative for the Western. Sahara visit uh, to Tindouf, and the picture, which I didn't understand when you first made the statement, but I see that there are pictures uh, circulating uh, about a child soldier in military fatigue and a uh, bulletproof uh, vest. Uh, in the light of this uh, visual, uh, uh, whatever, <laughs> Does the Secretary General feel that it's perhaps uh, maybe uh, due to, to start uh, looking into the issue of ch child, uh, children soldiers uh, in uh, Tendouf? Look, the, the, I think I was, we were clear on, on Mr., who Mr. Dimistor saw and what he didn't see. Uh, the issue of child soldiers, is a, I've just read out, is an issue that concerns uh, way too many parts of the of the globe, uh, and I would refer you to all the reporting we've done on that. Benno. Thanks, Steph. Um, my question is about Mali. I don't know if you announced that as well, but the German, uh, German Foreign Office said that the military government in Mali um, blocks many flights from MINUSMA in the country, and that the UN is actually in talks with the government to solve that problem. I would like to know how these. That, that's are going. correct. I mean, we are. Um, there were new procedures put in place for us to get clearance uh, for our flights. Uh, at this point, um, all our flights are grounded. As to, we try to get clarification on these procedures, uh, because they are, um, they make it extremely difficult for the UN to fulfill its mandate. So we're continuing our discussions with the authorities. Um, New procedures? Can can you go into detail? In I, I mean, I, I, the you know wherever we are operate in the world, there needs to be there. There are set rules about flight clearance, right? Um, and which is understandable and which is normal. 
because a country, a sovereign country, can has the control over its uh, skies. We want to be able to to operate in a way where the the procedure to file for those clearances and to get those clearances doesn't make it extremely difficult for us to operate. And the last follow up about this: um, How does that infringe right now the mission? Is there like? no um, aerial um, observation possible, for example, and also can UN workers now go in and out of the country um, with the, the commercial the, planes uh, or so? Uh, when we're talking about, uh, about flights, uh, we refer to anything that goes up in the air. Uh, my, 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 that's, that's at least since the Wright brothers, that's my understanding. Um, uh, but my, my, I'm, also understand that uh, this does not impact our, you know, medevac flights or emergency uh, flights to if people get wounded or, or worse. Uh, Philippe, and then I'll come back to you, Edie. Uh, on the same subject, yesterday you say only regular flight. Today you say all the flights. Is there a difference between yesterday and today? I would say uh, at the risk of being wrong, um, regular flights involve uh, non-emergency uh, uh, medical flights. Okay, and is there a link between the new situation and the closure of the frontiers? I think that's an analysis I will leave to journalists. Thank you. Edie. Um, let, me, uh, it, let me ask this a different way. Is the United Nations um, trying to determine why these new uh, regulations were instituted at this time? I mean, there, there are two things here. There are the, the, the procedures themselves, and there's the motivation for the procedures. Uh, I, it's not our business to get into the motivation. Uh, we're trying to get clarity uh, into the procedures and ensure that we have, we come to an agreement with the government where we, the, the mission can fulfill its, uh, fulfill its mandate to its fullest. Okay, uh, Nikos, please. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, first of all, uh, allow me to congratulate Ms. Specher on her new appointment and wish her all the best. Hope she does not forget that somewhere in the middle of the Mediterranean there is an equal but divided UN member called Republic of Cyprus. All the best, Ms. Specher. Now, staying in Cyprus. Uh, Stefan, according to Mr. Gabelheim's statement regarding the council members' consultations of OPSEP, the members call for respect and adherence to all relevant Security Council resolutions and decisions. My first question, please allow me two questions, sir, Stefan. My first one, what actions did the Secretary General take to prevent Turkey from violating these resolutions and decisions on a daily basis. And your second question? Are you on both? Okay, of course. My second question. Despite the 200,000 refugees in Cyprus due to Turkey's invasion since 1974, and despite Turkey's violates these resolutions and decisions daily, all right? We have never heard the Secretary General to use in his reports any of the words Turkish invasion, Turkish occupation, Turkish violations. In contrast, in all the, general, the Secretary General reports, he keeps an equal distance between the attacker, Turkey, and the victim, Cyprus. A big wise Stefan. Look, Thank uh, you. <clears throat> The, the Secretary General uh, reports in a way uh, that reflects the reality as we see it, and that's, that's way, how we report uh, all the time. So I'm not going to analyze, uh, do, do sort of post-game analysis of the reports. The reports are the reports. They speak for themselves. Uh, whether it's a report on, on Cyprus or anywhere else in the world, we often come from, we often then get criticized by more, or by some of the parties involved. But, you know, the, the reports continue and they stand, uh, they stand for, them, for themselves. <clears throat> We've always been very clear that it's imperative for 
for both sides in Cyprus to respect and abide by the UN, um, uh, by all relevant uh, Security Council uh, Security Council uh, resolutions. Okay. Uh, I totally understand that, but please, uh, how can the two communities come closer as long as there are troops and innovation? This is a question we've never look. I mean, Nikos, the issue of Cyprus is one that the United Nations uh, has been dealing with for a long time. Uh, it is one that the three secretary generals that I've been worked for have also been de have dealt with directly have gotten themselves involved directly in, in a way that sometimes they do with, more than with, with other issues. Um, and it is not a sh the, 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 the situation where we find ourselves is not for uh, the lack of, of uh, involvement by, uh, by the United Nations. We try to keep to bring the parties closer to get to an agreement um, for the benefit of all the, of all the people involved. Um, but I don't think the, the Secretary General is the sole uh, player in all of this. And I will leave it at that. Um, Michelle and then Abdel Hamid. Thanks, Steph. Um, a follow up to uh, the Secretary General's remarks last week on Afghanistan. Um, he spoke about the need for changes to rules and conditions that were hindering the, the transfer of money mm -hmm. into Afghanistan to, you know, stop the economy collapsing and to do things like pay civil servants. Yeah. What sort of response or reaction has he had from the governments in question that this applies to? Uh, that's a very good question, uh, and I need to get back to you on that. Uh, the question was better than okay. the answer, Thank Michelle. You. Go ahead. Uh, Abdel Hamid. Well, thank you, Stefan. I have two questions. The first, on the mini intifada has been taking place in the desert of the Negev between the Palestinian Bedouin there and Israeli uh, security forces. It's an attempt to ethnic cleanse those people who've been indigenously living there all their life in the town of Sa'wat al Atrash. Um, Tens of people were arrested, including 12-year-old boy and 13-year-old girl. And yet we didn't hear any word about this confrontation, which has been going on for over seven days. Okay. All right. Let me, let me check with the special coordinator's office on that. And your second question, sir? And my second question, in the village of Yatta, near Hebron, an 80-year-old man was run by an Israeli military vehicle, and he died the two days ago. His name is Suleiman al Hadalin. He's a tribal leader, well known. It's shocking for the whole Palestinian community, the killing of this old man by a, running, by a vehicle, Israeli uh, military vehicle. And yet, we didn't hear any word from any UN chat. I will, we obviously, I think every death of uh, any civilian is to be deplored and needs to be fully investigated. And I will see if there are any details on this one. Okay. Uh, it sounds like it's Paulina's turn. Uh, 